Well, it's the super late night show. <laughs> I've got a video exporting right now, and I really want to get power to this so that I can use it to capture some PV tomorrow. So luckily for me, because this is on my test wall, it's fairly simple to wire up, but I want to bring you along in getting everything wired up and that initial first power up so you can see how it works. So let's get started. I'll go ahead and pull the nuts off of here. The manual recommends 4 aught cable, and I like how they have the washer fixed on to the nut because then that means you're not fighting with a washer and a nut when it's way back in this space because they've got this protective shroud around the outside. And then we need to remember our toroid for our battery ca uh, cables. So positive is going to go on the left, negative on the right. So feed up through here. Place our toroid right over top of those cables. And then the torque spec for these battery terminals is 15 Newton meters or 11 foot pounds. So we'll do our ground line next. Remember, we've got a toroid for the ground line as well, and they recommend using eight to 10 gauge wire for your ground line. And then you've got to wrap it around twice. So I got it around twice there. I'll feed it down through the bottom. And I'll just pick one of these larger spots. Torque spec for the ground bus bar is 26 inch pounds or 2.9 Newton meters. I don't actually have a torque wrench for a flat-headed Phillips. So I'm just gonna have to go to where it's snug and then it'll connect to a grounding bus bar down in my wire way. AC output, I'll run my two lines. They recommend if you're using the full capacity of this inverter, 100 amp pass-through, two gauge wire for the input and the output. I don't have two gauge right now, I've got four and I'm going to closely monitor my output so that I don't go over the capacity of a four gauge wire. But we'll feed this down. Make sure you open this breaker up. Loosen it before you go to start tightening things down because it's gonna end up being more than likely closed and it won't actually pinch down on your wire. Tug test. Tighten a little more. For the AC output, 35 inch pounds or four Newton meters for torque. And we'll feed our neutral line down. Neutral line torque spec, 50 inch pounds or 5.6 Newton meters. So then I've got terminal blocks down here for input and my output. And we'll do the same for the AC input. All right, so we've got black to black, red to red, white to white, and then black, red, black, red, red, white, white. Neutrals come up to the neutral bar. AC output, black is on the left, red is on the right. AC input, black is on the left, red is on the right. And for my PV, I just have a pigtail with some MC4 connectors. We'll feed that right up through this grommet, raise these up. 
So if we look here, negative is on the left, positive is on the right. So my red stripe is my positive all the way up, click down, tug test. Same thing with my negative line all the way up to the top and let it bite down and you'll feel it bite down on it. So then I've got my pigtails for my MC4 connectors. So these will connect down here. I do have a battery communication cable, which again, I know it's messy right now, but I just want to make it work. BMS port is this one on the right. So we will plug into that right there. So everything looks good from in here. Everything is tightened down. So I think I'm to the point that I can actually turn this breaker on, the DC breaker, so that I can pre-charge the capacitors in the inverter. So turn that on. We'll look at the actual startup sequence in here too. Oh wait, I need to add the Wi-Fi dongle. That goes over here on this side. So you've got two screws down under here, Phillips screws to take off because part of this first time startup procedure is to use the Bluetooth from the app. Now I'm not sure if this contains the Bluetooth as well or if the Bluetooth is built into the inverter, but the manual says to add this. So, and you'll want to have the, the QR code on this facing out it might actually be easier to do this before you put it on the wall, especially if you're using a wire way. He's using a COM port pin and it's probably not the easiest thing to lock in. You can look in the side of the inverter over here to see if it actually is seating properly, of which it looks like it is. All right, I guess I turn on the pre-charge I was gonna check the manual, wasn't I? Power on the midnight, power on the PV, power on the battery from the battery breaker and any external batteries, power on the AC in. Connect the cell phone app via Bluetooth and click power on in the app for the first time. Then let's pre-charge and let's negative positive, yeah. <laughs> and the inverter is coming on. And turn on my battery breaker. It's interesting that it actually turned on, but if I remember talking to Dexter, he said he updated the firmware on these. So that might be the first time that it turned on. So I don't have to do this phone procedure, but I probably still need to anyways, if that makes any sense at all. Remember, it's late. It's probably I don't know, a quarter to two. <laughs> so it's still going through its own startup procedure. It could take up to like five minutes. So I need to download the app, so I'm actually gonna use the barcode that's on the side of the inverter. Let it scan that and open Midnight Pro. I already downloaded it on another device, but I can't connect to it right now. So we'll open that up and it's gonna ask you, do you want to use your Bluetooth? Okay, click here to scan. It finds it and we're gonna do the installer roll to start. I believe the password is super Super admin, all lowercase, and we are in. So we're gonna go into settings. So we're in off-grid mode right now because I don't have any AC in turned on, which is fine. Battery, pylon, save, com address, capacity, state of charge, so I can set values. I don't want it to charge by the grid. So 
So there's our smart loads, time controls. I gotta look at, I'll look at all this and walk through with you guys later. Communication, all the midnight services to determine your location. I'm probably gonna have to do that, aren't I? Once connected to a Wi-Fi hotspot with internet access, the device, so we'll let it, so it found my, my main network. Oh, it's pulling the network off of my phone. That's kind of cool, but I'm gonna change it. Save it. The network link over here started changing flat from purple to now it's flashing blue. That might mean that it's connected. Grid. I don't have it. I'm not gonna mess with the grid settings right now because it's turned off. You can see what the screen is. I don't believe it. It's not a touch screen at all. It's only informational only. The screen does turn off this button here on the side. Well, if you click it once, it'll turn the screen back on. So let's find out. Oh, I have to press harder. So we can see up here in the top left, there's a Wi-Fi icon. The date and time is still off, but it's just going to be rotating through. It shows our battery state of charge. I'm assuming the blinking means that it's communicating. But again, I haven't looked at a lot of this. I'm just guessing right now. 29% state of charge on the battery. Equipment maintenance. Device time. Notice whether to synchronize inverter time, please exercise caution. But lots to look at, lots to figure out. Just not tonight. Or not this morning. Well, it's been a very long day and it's been a very tiring day, so I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of testing right now. I'm going to save that for another day. But it was running all day long, gathering PV for, I mean, it was kind of a partially sunny day today. And so looking at the display, 52.4 volts. We're currently at 34% battery. I'm assuming 4 kilowatt hours is what was brought into this inverter from PV. But other than that, we don't have any output power. We don't have any input power. So let's verify everything's working and flip the switch. And then, I don't know, I'm thinking I'm going to just go for the big load. We're going to, we're going to throw the bounce house blower <laughs> right now. So we're going to open up the side here. And before I go flipping any breakers, 240 volts on the AC output. Let's clip this right there. So we'll hold on to the neutral and onto the top, leg two, 120 volts, leg one, 120 volts. So AC output, when I turn this on, it will provide power to this panel. And then I've got these two breakers turned off. This one is our bounce house blower. So we're gonna kick that thing on and just give it a good surge right out of the gate. So we'll turn on this breaker in three, two, one. That's a, that's kind of a fun click. I mean, it's not a super hard click, but it seems like it's a delayed click. I don't know. It just kind of feels different, but I, I haven't used any midnight breakers before. So, that might be their magnetic hydraulic breaker aspect. We'll leave AC input turned off and we can actually close this door right now. I can never remember which pin is which. There we go, 240 volts there, 120 there. If I can get the probe to sit just right there, we go 120 volts there. When I flip this switch, it's going to add the bounce house blower surge right away, which most other inverters that have the ability to run this blower, they do run it, but they don't like the startup. So I kind of want to see what it's going to do right off the bat. And we'll throw that breaker in three, two, one.
Well, it's obviously running it. Trying to look at the display. 1.8 kilowatt load on leg two. And nothing on leg one. Feels like the fans just kicked on. I need to move that blower, it's too loud. I can't hear what the inverter's doing. But the fans were not actually running that long. I did not hear on this inverter any strain, struggle, nothing. I mean, I didn't hear a single thing. That could be because the blower's right over there. But that kind of shocked me. Okay, so I intentionally ran the bounce house blower outside with extension cords so that I can hear just this inverter. And in fact, my camera on my phone will also record the audio from just this inverter. So I want to see, do I hear anything at all when that thing fires up? And we're going to try again. Take two. In three, two, one. See, the fan in the case isn't running. No fans are actually running. <laughs> That's cool. It just doesn't care. Well, sweet. Now I really want to put the house on this thing and try it out. But that'll end up having to be for another day. So something else that I probably, that I want to take a look at in the app is, does the app reflect real time? We'll look at it, as it from an end user standpoint. Does the app reflect in real time the data of like the loads since I'm connected to Bluetooth? So down here on the bottom left, inverter off grid, there's no load. Home backup load, zero watts. So let's see how long does it take to actually reflect in the app for when I turn the load on. And we will turn that on in three, two, one, now. Two point two nine kilowatts showing up on the screen, so five seconds, ten seconds, and if we go and turn it off, see, it'd be nice if there was like a refresh, last refresh timestamp, so that you could see what the status is, because it is going to be, you know, five ten seconds off. So if we go and flip the switch and turn it off now. And again, I'll have to look at it, what it was in, in post, to, just to see how long it actually took for it to zero out. But it's not solar assistant fast, but it's still faster than a lot of other inverters connections. So with that, <laughs> I'm going to let you go. Like I said earlier, it's been a long day. I was actually editing the previous video and got it uploaded at like three in the morning, I think. So yeah, it's been a long day. Till next time, y'all stay safe, stay cool, and we'll catch up with you later.